Hi, it's Dwyer. Today is Thursday, May the 24th, 2018. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, let's touch on Eddie Hearn's offer to Adrian Broner, right? Adrian Broner is called it slave money, right? Apparently slaves these days get paid more than $6 million over three fights. Let me just say, these boxers are in a bubble. Many of the people around them are yes men, right? They're thinking about the money they make off the boxer. They're thinking about paying their daughter's private school education, their mortgage, their rent, their car note, whatever, right? From these seats, outside the bubble, right? From the bleacher seats, from the cheap seats at the fight, let me just say, I personally thought Adrian Broner lost to Jesse Vargas. I've said so here online, right? I think Adrian Broner's skills are declining. I think he has a problem with volume, right? In other words, the beginning of that Jesse Vargas fight, Vargas knew he could land to the body and he could throw more punches than Adrian Broner, right? I'm not buying Broner's framing. I'm not buying Broner's theatrics. If I were Adrian Broner and anybody offered me more than $6 million for my next three fights, I would say the words, thank you, right? Let me also point out, too, that Eddie Hearn obviously is huge in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom right now is experiencing a boxing renaissance, right? At different times, different countries are going to be at the forefront of boxing. That's where the United Kingdom finds itself right now. Now, if Adrian Broner wants to market himself where he gets outside the ring opportunities and he, you know, exposes himself to more fans, right, on an international stage, he needs to take the Eddie Hearn offer seriously. I say this as someone who doesn't know Eddie Hearn, who doesn't know Adrian Broner, right, who doesn't stand to benefit from stating the obvious, Right? I don't care what Adrian Broner's yes men are saying to him. I just know that he lost that last fight. I just know that he looked sad against Mikey Garcia in a fight in which I thought he'd do better. Right? I just know that Adrian Broner these days isn't the Adrian Broner who was on top of the world. Right? Adrian himself knows that Adrian Granado's fight they were supposed to fight at a different weight class. Then in the last few days, they changed the weight class on Broner's opponent. And of course, Broner's opponent with the new weight class because Broner couldn't make the old weight class. Broner's opponent, Granados, then made that a highly competitive fight, right? Sometimes fighters have to realize, hey, my A game hasn't been around for a few fights now. Right? Let me stop kidding myself. Let me stop believing that I'm entitled to Anthony Joshua money. Let me be realistic and let me get myself back in the saddle. See if I'm still an elite world-class fighter. Before I start calling multi-million dollar offers slave money. Now let's talk about Badu Jack and Adonis Stevenson. Right? Let me say, first, people need to be careful what they wish for. Right, Badu Jack wanted to fight Stevenson. My prediction here online was that Stevenson would win the fight. Right, the fight officially was a draw. Let's talk about it. But first, what I want to do is focus on Badu Jack. Now, I've been here online talking about how hard it is, and it's extremely hard to be a unified champion in the sport of boxing. We take it for granted, right? Terrence Crawford was the undisputed champion at 140. Folks, that by itself should have made Crawford the boxer of the year, right? Understand you have some champs right now with multiple belts. Anthony Joshua, who I mentioned earlier. Gennady Golovkin, right? These are guys who are unbeaten. These are guys who, when you look at the resume, you see them fighting people like Vladimir Klitschko in Joshua's case, 
right? Canelo in Golovkin's case, right? Daniel Gill, other guys, uh, Danny Jacobs in the Golovkin case. And still, even though these guys are unbeaten champions fighting in big fights, right? Didn't Joshua just beat Joseph Parker? They're at risk of losing belts because each sanctioning body has its own mandatory. So let's look at Badu Jack, right? Badu Jack is a guy who fights the tough fights. What do I mean by that? When he was at 168 pounds, think about it, folks. He fought and beat George Groves, who scheduled for his own big fight with Callum Smith, right? Jack takes on George Groves, beats him, takes on James DeGale, gets a draw with him, right? So let's just keep the scorecard. Let's just say charitably that Badu Jack held his own at 168 pounds. So then he goes to 175 pounds. He takes on the WBA champion, Nathan Cleverly. He beats him. So keep in mind, he fights Groves. He fights the Gale. He fights Cleverly. He doesn't have a loss there, right? He's two wins, one draw. Then he fights WBC champion Adonis Stevenson. In other words, he shows up at light heavy. He fights a WBA champion. He pivots. Now he's fighting a WBC champion. He gets a draw against Adonis Stevenson. So after four world-class fights, Badu Jack has no losses right? No losses. He has some draws, right? He has two wins. For all of that, Badu Jack doesn't have a title today. Keep in mind, folks, he's unbeaten and light heavy. He beat the WBA champion. He then got a draw with the WBC champion. Of course, the WBA told him when he had the title, you have to fight our mandatory. If you don't fight our mandatory, we're going to strip you of the title. So Badu Jack says, hey, well, I'm about to fight the WPC champion. Doesn't that mean something? It's not like I'm here with the WBA belt, which he just got. And then I'm, you know, lollipopping around. I'm not fighting big names. No, this guy's living by fighting big names. Unfortunately, that's the nature of boxing. You have to look beyond the title. When you look at Badu Jack, here's a guy fighting champions, holding his own against champions. He doesn't have a belt. Not only is he not unified, even though he had a belt and signed to fight the other champion, not only is he not unified, he doesn't have a belt. Right? Think it through. As good as Golovkin is, you do have contenders saying, hey, what about my shot? At heavyweight, as good as Joshua is, you have Alexander Povetkin, another Olympic gold medalist, a former heavyweight champion himself, saying, what about my shot? Right? And the sanctioning body, and let's be fair here, the sanctioning body is saying, look, we know you beat some other guys. We know you're talking about fighting Wilder. But if you're going to wear our belt, you have to fight the guys who have earned mandatory contender status under our standards, right? That's fair. So all I'm saying is the next time you see a guy and they say that he is a unified champion, you need to tip your hat to that guy. That guy's done a hell of a lot of work. You can be the best in the division and you can be unbeaten and you can have a history of fighting people like Golovkin does and still be in danger of losing your belts as Badu Jack lost his, right? Despite fighting Groves to Gale, Cleverly, and Adonis Stevenson. Think about it. He fights Stevenson, one of the longest reigning champions in all of boxing. He gets a draw. He leaves the ring without the title he won in the ring and without Stevenson's title. Let me also say this too. 
Let's remember, on a different note, boxing is entertainment. I'm serious about that, right? Some of the guys get it more than others. I listen to some interviews and I'm sure the fighter means well, but I'm sure his handlers and his sponsors have convinced him to say nothing controversial and have convinced him to sound as corporate as possible in the hope of getting advertisements and stuff like that. Okay, great. Those interviews are snoozers. But then occasionally you get a guy like Adonis Stevenson, who, <laughs> who shows up and he's well-dressed, right? He has on a suit, sometimes he has on a jacket, but you could tell he didn't just walk into the press conference from the gym, right? This guy, no doubt, has a tailor, he has a mirror, he, he wants to present himself a certain way. He also is the champ and he wants you to know it, but he wants to be respectful. So he has a crown that he wears to press conferences. <laughs> so if you don't know who's who when you show up to the press conference, all you have to do is look for the crown and you know who the champ is. Now, let's appreciate Stevenson's show because he's 40 years old. Right? Father time eventually catches up to all of us. But we need to appreciate his show. I understand some of you are going to want to go back more than a decade and talk about some legal problems he had. Look, the history of boxing are guys redeeming themselves. Guys who have had problems, who have gotten their life straight. Stevenson has gotten his life straight. And right now, let's enjoy his pre-fight show, whenever he fights, because it's one of the best in boxing. You have a tragedy unfolding at heavyweight where some high-profile heavyweights are trying to look tough, so they're throwing around curse words and talking about how they're going to F up their contender, right? That's unfortunate. Stevenson's one of the few guys in boxing who understands that sometimes fathers want to look at pre-fight press conferences with their teenage sons. That fight fans have kids. That these guys really are role models to some extent. So what I like with Stevenson is in the pre-fight hype, right? Stevenson shows up, he's wearing a suit. He has on a crown, right? People need to understand this is not by chance. This is a presentation. This is an entertaining presentation that a long-standing champion is putting on. He's very respectful to Badu Jack. He mentions that Badu Jack is a multiple champion and stuff like that. But while he's being respectful, he also has to point out what he believes. He says to Badu Jack, hey, you know, you're a two-time champ, but in effect, and I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> it's actually really good trash talk, right? I encourage you in reviewing this Stevenson-Jack fight to look at and appreciate Stevenson's show before the fight. Let me also point out, too, that this is not the first event at which Stevenson's worn this crown, right? Stevenson's even shown up to fights wearing the crown, right? Um, let's hope young fighters are looking at Stevenson and are appreciating the show and are incorporating elements of Stevenson's presentation and marketing into what they're doing. Now, let me say this. Just imagine you're a fighter, right? You're the contender fighting for the WBC light heavyweight crown. You travel to the champion's country, right? You've wanted this fight. You've asked for this fight. You've even given up your own belt to get this fight. Right? Round one starts. You're in against a 40-year-old. A 40-year-old. Not only that, you're known as a power puncher in the sport. But yet, you come out and the old man is showing more foot movement than you. Worse yet, 
The old man is right in front of you, showing more volume than you. It's the 40-year-old whose title you're trying to take that's actually outmaneuvering you in the early rounds. Now, all I can say is this. It, it, it's clear that Badu Jack thought that as the fight went along, Stevenson was going to crumble. But understand the pressure Badu Jack put himself under. He's fighting in Stevenson's backyard. Badu Jack gives away something like the first three rounds of the fight. Now, I agree. Stevenson has an A-plus left hand. It's one of the sport's very best punches. I agree. Only a fool would rush in on Adonis Stevenson. Right? It's clear, too, that because Stevenson's a southpaw, as Paulie Malignaggi points out on the telecast, right, Badu Jack had to figure out how to enter the pocket. In other words, Badu Jack takes a few rounds to figure out the angles. That's, by the way, why I don't think a rematch happens. Stevenson's savvy enough to know, look, I just got a draw against this guy. Now that he knows the angles, why would I want to fight him again and have him start faster? Right? But understand, Badu Jack is down early. Badu Jack has a lot of draws on his record because of his tentative nature. Right? He plays it safe, in part because he got caught by Derek Edwards early in a fight and got knocked out. So while he's playing it safe, he's in against a charismatic champion, long reigning. And let me say, you know the way judges are in boxing. They like to score for the favorite. That's just the reality. So I'm a judge, I'm in Canada. Adonis Stevenson comes out. He's doing more than Badu Jack, who's not landing big punches who's tentative, right, who is losing the rounds. So the first round comes, and I say, well, that's a Stevenson round. Second round comes, I say, well, that's a Stevenson round. Third round comes, I say, that's a Stevenson round. At what point does it become a matter of habit? Where I'm watching the fourth round, I start to daydream, I start thinking about my own mortgage, <laughs> I start thinking about I start thinking about my old kids. Then, of course, the bell rings at the end of the round, and I'm thinking, well, no one got knocked down in that round. Who won that round? Who did I take the first three rounds? Adonis Stevenson. Also, keep in mind, too, in boxing, there's a tradition. This is multi-generational, right? The saying goes that to become the champion, you have to beat the champion. Right? So if it's a slow round, if I'm even thinking about who won the round, then in the back of my head I'm thinking, well, this challenger isn't doing enough to beat the champion. In other words, it's like baseball. Tie goes to the runner. In boxing, the runner is the champion. So you saw the first half of this fight. And Badu Jack looked tentative. He didn't look like a guy who came to knock the crown off of Adonis Stevenson's head, right? So let me say this. The first half of the fight's kind of perfunctory. It's Stevenson jumping around, changing angles, right? Understand, Stevenson's movement is a big part of his success, right? You see him dangling that big left hand. And you start to figure out the angles, then he moves. So you have to readjust, but you can't be reckless. Because if you're reckless and he drops that left hand on you, you could be unconscious. Right? So as you start to adjust to the new angles, he moves again. This is how it is fighting Deontay Wilder, another guy with an eight-plus punch. With Wilder, it's the straight right. With Stevenson, it's the straight left. This is how it is fighting Manny Pacquiao, another guy with a great punch. With Pacquiao, who's kind of like the smaller version, the mini Adonis Stevenson, 
right? He's a southpaw like Stevenson with that same straight left hand. So let me say this. We get to the second half of the fight. And folks, you didn't have to even know who was the 40-year-old fighter. You saw it. Adonis Stevenson is having a major problem with stamina. Fortunately for him, he still has the title because, in my opinion, Jack makes some mistakes. The first is this. I doubt Badu Jack's girlfriend holds him or wife, holds him as much as Adonis Stevenson did the second half of his fight. Right? Stevenson is holding on. Right? Now, Badu Jack isn't gifted with great feet. In other words, you see some guys, and the other guy tries to hold on to them, and the guy will push them away, and he'll move away. He'll make it hard for the tired fighter to clinch him and hold on. Here, Badu Jack doesn't do that. So you have Adonis Stevenson tired. He's tired, right? Spent. Done. He's holding on. Right? He's practically, you know, it's almost like these two guys are slow dancing together at times. He's, he's holding on to Badu Jack. And Badu Jack just didn't move him off of him enough. Right? Just, just didn't do it. Let me also say, too, that Stevenson's a lefty. Badu Jack seemed to have success throwing a right uppercut. Look at the film. Right? He dips his shoulder. He's throwing a right uppercut. It seemed to land to me. Right? If you're going to have the other guy close to you holding on, at least have a way to get off that right uppercut. Think about Anthony Joshua. Jack doesn't throw that right uppercut enough. Let me also say, too, Go back and look at Carl Frotch fights. <laughs> you know, there's certain guys who, when the other guy is holding them, the guy will prime the ref to start deducting points off the guy holding him. In other words, you're fighting a guy and the guy's tired. Maybe because the guy's 40, right? The guy's tired and the guy's holding you. And a Carl Frotch would actually have his hands out like this to let everybody in the arena know, I'm not the one holding up, right? This guy's holding me. Frotch would turn to the ref and have his hands out like this, right? The other guy's holding him. Now keep in mind, you should be able to do that with Stevenson. Because Stevenson's most dangerous punch is that straight left from distance, right? Up close, Stevenson can throw hooks to the body and stuff. But when he's up close, you know he's too close to you to throw his A-plus punch, right? It, it would be like fighting Deontay Wilder. If you're inside of Wilder's straight right hand, then Wilder can hit you with shots, but they're not going to take you out like his A-plus shot. So here, Badu Jack is focused, and he's having success. He's winning all of these later rounds. But Badu Jack is focused on the fight. <coughs> he's not focused on the crowd and the referee enough. So the ref doesn't deduct points for Stevenson's excessive holding, and the ref knows he's holding excessively. Because what the ref does is the ref often, especially in the last three rounds, the ref jumps in and keeps parting the guys. Because the ref realizes that when they get inside, Stevenson's just holding. All I'm saying is we're looking for edges in a fight that was declared a draw. If Jack had to do this fight over again, I think Jack needs to develop the Carl Frotch theatrical show where the other guy is holding and you let the crowd and the judges know that the other guy's holding, right? You, you have your hands apart. You make it obvious that the guy's holding you. 
you roll your eyes for the camera when the guy comes in and holds you. Right? Let me also say, too, there are ways, well, we get to the 10th round. It's a round Badu Jack dominates. Right? He's dominating the 10th round. The reason why Stevenson still has his title, and I say this as someone who bet on Stevenson in the fight, right? Fight ends up a draw, is because Stevenson gets off a great body shot toward the end of the 10th round, right? That shot cripples Badu Jack. Jack looks like he's been hit by a car. So then we start the 11th round and Stevenson continues to go to the body. Right? Let's just say Badu Jack got a little reckless late in a fight. The title hung in the balance halfway through the 10th round. And Jack didn't do enough to protect his body. Hindsight's 100% from Stevenson's body shots. Jack doesn't recover until halfway through the 11th round. In other words, the judges who were giving Stevenson all of the early rounds then started to think, wow, you know what? Maybe this belt is gonna change hands. Maybe Badu Jack is coming back in the second half of this fight. Then you see the end of the 10th round and you're thinking, nope, Jack needs a knockout now to win this fight. Understand, <coughs> the judges all give Jack the 12th round. Right? They all give Jack the 12th round. For that, Jack gets a draw. Right? Jack wins the 12th round here. He wins the 12th round in the DeGale fight. He gets the knockdown into the Gale fight. But understand, Jack, because of inactivity, because of throwing only 15 punches in the first round, because of not doing a lot against a 40-year-old, the first half of the fight, Madu Jack runs out of time. I'm just telling you, I'm sure even Adonis Stevenson knows, had this fight gone to a 13th round, he would have been in trouble. I'm guessing right now several heavyweights want to fight Adonis Stevenson. They saw the second half of the fight and they're thinking to themselves, whoa, Stevenson has a problem with stamina going 12 rounds. If we can just push the envelope a little bit more in the first half of the fight, maybe we can take that crown off his head. Right? So I'll say this. Admirable performance by both men, right? Stevenson's idea of having the belt is coming out even at 40 in the first round in front of a younger lion, not a young lion, because Badu Jack's 34, but a younger lion, and Stevenson basically is jumping around saying, here I am, you want my title? Here I am, come get it, right? Stevenson, great performance early in the fight. Badu Jack, admirable performance, coming back in the second half of the fight. Slips up at the end of the 10th round. I'm sure he lost the 11th on some of the judges' scorecards. Waited too long to hit the switch. Right, so Stevenson survives here. If he fights a guy with a good jab, who can win the slow rounds, right? Badu Jack's game didn't allow him to win the slow rounds. If Stevenson fights a guy with a good jab who could stay away from Stevenson's straight left, a guy who could win at least a third of the early rounds, win two out of the first six rounds, right? A guy with more stamina, than Stevenson, who's not going to allow Stevenson to get close and clinch him. Stevenson's going to be in trouble. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Tell us how your scorecard looked. I thought the draw was a good, fair decision. 
if you feel someone got robbed here, if you feel Badu Jack did enough to win the title on this fight, I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Understand too, I don't care who wears the crown right now. Badu Jack is a threat to anyone at 175 pounds, right? Understand, this guy is fighting more tough fights than most champions, right? Again, beats Groves, draws with the Gale, beats Cleverly, draws with Adonis Stevenson, right? If you're handicapping fights, you don't even have to think about whether Badu Jack is world class. You know he is because he has no losses in those four fights. Food for thought. Anyway, let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.